feel like it's gonna be a tough day for me. And it's definitely like at the end of the day, you get to a point where you're like, I'm exhausted right now. And it all catches up to you a little bit. All right, hold up, let's rewind. The year is 2019 and we're surrounded by more technology than humans have ever been before. We're on our phones for calls, texting, games, and emails. Our computers while at work and our televisions when we get home. Where's the balance? Is it all too much? My name is Mike Dewey. I'm a filmmaker from California, and together with my friend and producer, Katie Hetrick, we started doing some research on technology and its effect on anxiety, stress, and well-being until we came across a funny term called Japanese forest bathing. And no, it's got nothing to do with taking a bath in the forest, but more so spending time in nature to improve your health and well-being. To learn more about it, we packed our bags and headed to Japan, where we met with leading researcher on the subject, Dr. Yoshifumi Miyazaki. So right now we're up here in Chibi University and we're going to meet with the professor and we're going to sit down and we're going to talk to him and find out a little bit about his research and how it's been utilized here in Japan. Outside of Tokyo right now and there's buildings, we're obviously very much in an urban environment, but as soon as you step on campus, there's gardens, there's groves of trees. It's obviously, there's a, a lot of, of emphasis on creating a natural environment. Through a translator, Miyazaki went on for a couple of hours passionately explaining Japanese forest bathing, or shirinyoku as it's called in Japanese. He told us that essentially the idea of Japanese forest bathing is if humans go back into nature and spend more time where they came from, it will help reduce our blood pressure, our heart rates, our stress, and overall leave us feeling a lot better. He also mentioned that for about 99.9% .9 of the existence of humans, we've lived in these natural environments, and only the final 0.01% have we been around such technology in urban environments. On a final note, he told us that there were many trails throughout Japan where this research is being done, and we started digging around to look for a trail ourselves. We then came across this local woman who told us about a very interesting trail. After speaking with her, our minds were made up. This trail is commonly known as the Kumano Kodo. Our journey on the Kumano Kodo starts in Tanabe. From here, there are several different routes you can take. The one we chose would be four to five days long and involve all day hikes throughout mountains with overnight stays in the local villages. We used a local guide company to help translate and coordinate our stays. We also decided in an effort to fully disconnect, we'd both shut off our phones and technology with the exception of my camera and a small camera Katie had to document the trip. starting to sweat. The light is going fast. 20, 30 more minutes, it's gone. Oh. 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 Why did I bring this drone? Uh, we're over the big steep stuff now, and hopefully the rest of it is just flat. It's really pretty, it's kind of nice to just it's getting quieter too. get in the zone. Yeah, it's getting quieter. It's nice. So, I think we're in Takahara. There's some street lamps and a payphone light. It's pretty dark though. Katie's looking around with a flashlight trying to figure out where we're sleeping tonight. Her not gonna use our phones or anything since we're detoxing and I think she's found out where we're going. Shower and bath are downstairs. Oh, okay. What an amazing end to the first day. If this is a sign of what's to come, we are in for quite a trip.
While the main goal of our trip was to disconnect and learn more about Japanese forest bathing, we quickly realized that this trail would offer us so much more. Not only an insight into Japanese culture, but also an opportunity to learn more about this ancient trail. So currently we are in Takahara, which is the starting point for section two of the Kamano Kodo. Takahara in Japanese literally means high field. So I think that right now we are currently at one of the highest villages that we're going to reach on this journey. And it is absolutely stunning. The appreciation of nature has long been a strong cultural tradition of the Japanese people. The original religion of Japan is actually Shinto, which is a religion in which one worships deities that embody rocks, trees, wind, and the sun. It's also said that Shinto shrines are typically surrounded by nature and give off a sense of calm and relaxation. This is a shrine right here, and it's to commemorate the people who kind of came through um, during their pilgrimage, which for some of them was over a thousand years ago. It's not uncommon to see um, both a shrine and a, which is Shintoism, next to a temple, which is uh, for the Buddhist practice. Cool. Um, because it just sort of shows, I think that they purposely put the two together to show that they're not at odds with one another, but they actually are harmonious with one another. Although we chose to do this hike together, we both spend much of our days hiking apart to entirely clear our minds and take in the surroundings of nature. Forest bathing in its purest form actually involves doing nothing but sitting still and taking in the sights, smells, and sounds of nature. Our host from the previous night had spoken no English, however, our host for this evening spoke some. With that, through small conversation, we began to realize the immense respect the Japanese have, not only for nature, but for food too. The meal our host had prepared us had all been sourced from his garden, and we could tell how passionate he was to describe each dish in detail. This, this rice is grown here. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. welcome to Santa Place, uh, Japanese. Kampai. 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 We spoke after dinner and talked about how this journey was becoming something so much bigger than we had realized initially. The stuff that we've researched coming into this trip and part of the stuff that Katie's really been fascinated with is this concept of Japanese forest bathing and how being outside in nature will help lower your blood pressure and it will help kind of overall relax you. It'll help, it, it chemically actually changes your body and I think part of that for me has been not being on my phone all the time and just being super, super present and I've noticed my sleeping has gotten a lot better and I've just been more present and aware. I think I've actually also gotten more productive. Instead of sitting on my phone for an hour or two swiping through Instagram and Facebook, I'm like, hey, maybe I'll go shoot something. Maybe I'll look outside for sunset. Maybe I'll go talk to the guy outside or have a cool interaction with a local. It's a reality check. Like, I don't, I don't know how to find that balance going forward and, and we're so concerned with how quick and responsive we are these days with technology and text messages. If you don't respond within five minutes, you think you're getting blown off. So I guess the question is, is how, how can we find that balance going forward? Is it possible? And I don't know. It's just being on this trip has kind of opened my eyes to some things and yeah. So historically, this trail obviously has religious roots. In a modern sense, this trail is neat because it kind of offers you whatever you need from it. I mean, maybe it's exercise, maybe it's 
bonding with your family. Maybe it's your own journey or something that you're learning about yourself. And for me, it's been a, an amazing detox away from things and reconnecting with nature, which I haven't really had as much in Los Angeles, but it's been such a beautiful journey. I didn't realize until like just now that the all the little shrines along the way, which are like basically mini shrines all leading up to the Grand Shrine, um, historically like hundreds of years ago and some even thousands were little tea houses or places of rest, um, places for people who are doing the pilgrimage, usually royalty or part of the imperial family. It was places for them to give gratitude and um, practice their spiritual beliefs along the way. We've gotten to the end of our trek here, exploring some of these temples a little bit. There's actually a lot of people here, a lot of Japanese tourists, but the good news is another end to a long day. Feel pretty good, exhausted. Finish out a few more steps and call it a night. Day four of the hike, the final day of the hike, and also the longest day of the hike with about 10 miles ahead of us. And of course, it is raining, so. Bummer. Best weather of the trip so far. I knew this was coming sooner or later, though, honestly. <laughs> it had to, it had to. The slippery rocks don't help much. It's all part of the journey though, and so far it's been worth it. Whoa! In order for memories to really solidify and stick with you, I firmly believe that there has to be a level of discomfort that goes along with it. There has to be something that pulls you out of your normal routine or uh, something about the plan has to be disrupted. Definitely getting to the point where I'm a little hungry, um, very tired, and uh, I have no idea where Mike is. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I feel like the last few days I've felt pretty good, and it's definitely like at the end of the day you get to a point where you're like, I'm exhausted right now, and it all catches up to you a little bit. But I feel like the hiking wise, I've been totally fine. But today in particular, oh, I just saw that we have 12 kilometers. It's like six or seven miles left. The thing is, is it's all uphill, so, and it's in the rain, and I'm carrying all this heavy camera gear, so. That was shitty. That was gnarly, dude. I'm Straight over it. Uphill. Yeah, so oh. apparently, um, this is, we're at the top. Cool. So no more uphill. That was beast mode, dude. Yeah, 870 meters. It's beautiful, though. Super pretty. Um, good news is that hundreds of other pilgrims have done this in the past, and all described it as being the most difficult portion of the entire trail. Really? Yes, even the famous poet, Fujiwara wrote in his diary in 1201 that this route is very difficult and it is impossible to describe precisely how tough it is. I feel better now. So we're done. Yes. That's probably not true, but love the enthusiasm. I'd, optimism. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we are both so exhausted and we still have like four hours to go. This is by far the hardest day of the trip. All right, guys, I just saw a sign that says we have like two and a half miles left, which is super exciting. Oh, today it took a lot out of me. I was pretty worn down there in the very beginning, as you guys saw, 
was really wearing on me. I was by myself because Katie was a couple, she was probably like an hour ahead of me. She was powering on and I just got into a funk. And uh, uh, yeah, it was tough. Final stretch. This is incredible. What a way to end our journey through the Kamano Kodo in this foggy, mystical forest that we're in on the Kamano Kodo. Wow, there's no one here. There's no one around. The Kamano Ancient Road. Wow. Oh, we're at the end. Is this it? I think so. Did we reach Nachi-san. There's a temple and a waterfall over here. It looks like we're kind of hanging up in the clouds, which is pretty cool. Well, shall we go to the very last stop? Let's do it. On the final steps of the, of the hike. This is so cool. What a great way to end it. Exhausted and wet and cold and excited for a hot tub onsen, um, but also very excited. This was a truly cool, special experience. Although we went to Japan to learn about Japanese forest bathing, we left with something so much more. One could say that our journey along the Kumano Kodo was a giant distraction away from the true test of the digital detox. But for us both, there was something about the forest that we couldn't deny pulled us in. Maybe the Japanese are onto something. Five to ten hours alone at many times on the trail, completely at ease, questioning what's around every corner and our own willpower. <sighs> Losing thought in the unknown mysteries of the forest instead of social media feeds. Researchers like Miyazaki are continuing to do research on what it is about the forest and nature that chemically changes us. Is it the smells? The sounds? The noises? There's no doubt as technology progresses, our dependency on it will grow greater and greater, tests have already shown. Our addiction now is higher than it's ever been. The goal now is, how do we strike that balance? Is spending more time in nature the solution? I'll say going into this project for us both, we were very curious and intrigued, and I was even a bit skeptical. Now, leaving Japan two weeks later, we're asking ourselves, what is it about nature that changed us? 